What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Gaming with the Bros Cast, episode 167. My name is Harrison. I am joined by my brother, Nick, as always. Nailed it again. Nailed it again. Two weeks in a row, <laughs> Dude, baby. Nice. Two weeks in a row. I'm feeling good, Nick. We, we've got a lot of Zelda to look yes, forward to. Um, Nintendo keeps dropping like little little like mini micro like extra gameplay stuff that we haven't seen, which is really cool, yeah. which I figure that's what they would do um, after we got like the final trailer. But all the stuff just looks insane. Incredible. I'm so hyped up, man. Um, in, 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 yeah. in addition to that, we yeah. also have a surprise release of the big DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 coming out tomorrow. Yeah, so that's yeah, we did. I mean, I mean, I didn't expect this until later this year. I'm not sure what you were thinking, but I, I've it's got crazy that I've got my story. we'll talk about it here in a little bit. But I, I I've, yeah, well, well, yeah, I've got my suspicions on why they're doing this. But um, mm-hmm. so let's uh, I guess before we dive into what we've been playing, Nick, how was how was your how was your week? It's pretty good. Yeah, um, dude, it's been raining like every weekend for the past. Yes, month. man. Like it's like it'll be so like nice during the week and then. As soon as Friday hits, it it's horrible. It's like it's starting to actually piss me off. Yeah, because yeah. I um dad dad uh wanted me to cut his grass and I was gonna do it last Saturday, but then I was like, no, it's supposed to rain. So I cut my grass Friday and then drove over to his house and cut his grass. So between I was dude, I was exhausted Friday. Like his I am sure. Like they have beautiful grass. Um and sorry, we're talking about grass here. I I know, guys, I know. But they have beautiful grass, but it is super thick. And it is like, it's actually like difficult to push yeah. a lawnmower through. Um, Do you which have I like was, a, is a lawnmower like auto? Yeah, I, I just use dad's like lawnmower. Yeah, and it, yeah it's, it's it's auto. Um, auto driving? Yeah, auto, extent. auto, yeah, it automatically goes. I don't know, you just hold the little lever down and it takes you off. But yeah. Um, yeah, even with that, it was still like pretty, pretty difficult. So uh, he was like, he's like, you're proud of me for cutting the grass every week now, aren't you? And I was like, well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you're crazy. You're a crazy person. But now that I know that it's ridiculously hard to c- push that grass. Yeah. Put, so. he, yeah. Put some more, uh, some more respect on the name. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I had a run in with a wasp this week. Me, me and Alicia were driving back from target or something and we pulled into the driveway (laughs) and right when we park a wasp out of nowhere just comes and and lands on the rear on the side mirror yeah and just like crawls behind it almost like it already had a home there so okay because because we leave my car you know in the driveway so yeah it's in the same spot so maybe you know maybe a wasp set up shop there it's really shit so, We're stuck. <laughs> so, We're yeah, so like, <laughs> so I get out my side. Alicia also gets out my side because it was on on you know the the passenger side. Mirror. Yeah. And like, what do we do? Like, what do you do when a bee is in your windshield? And it was like a big wasp. Like it was, it it had some years on it. You yeah. Know, it had to, it, it's been to the gym a few times. I'm gonna sting you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sting you real good. Uh, so like. So I, so I put a plastic bag over the mirror to okay. trap it. Yeah. And because I guess that felt like a good idea at the time. I was like, okay, maybe it'll suffocate. Yeah. And then we did some more research and everyone recommended like, like spraying a pine saw solution into a plastic bag and then wrapping it around and the, the chemicals will kill it. Okay. So did you, did you guys not have like raid, like a, a bee, like the bee hornet raid stuff? No. Get it, you need to get it yet yeah yeah, yeah you need to get it because it. it's um yeah they're 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 really bad like ours now that we've covered our um we when we redid our like windows and like uh, like the siding and stuff like i think they can get up in the eaves so like i'll periodically spray like raid stuff because they're constantly right behind like right beside our like <clears throat> our deck door mm-hmm. um so yeah I, I would i would recommend ca- carrying a uh, just keep that thing on you at all times. <laughs> you know I keep that thing on me. I keep that thing thing. <laughs> yeah, so I uh like one evening this weekend I I removed the first plastic bag and like sprayed a bunch of pine salt yeah. into another bag and, and and put it on real quick and then 
tied it off and then waited like 24 hours. And then once it got a little bit dark the next day, like around evening time, took it off. And I was about to like just spray a bunch of water into it. Yeah. When I saw the bee, it was dead. It, the dead wasp was like right outside of the mirror, almost yeah. like it was trying to get out, but couldn't. I was like, damn, it actually worked. Yeah. Pine saw. So if, if, if anyone ever gets a, a bee behind their side mirror and it creates a nest, spray a bunch of pine saw in a bag, put it around the mirror and just tie it off and wait like yeah. 24 hours. But yeah, I was, I was a little panicked. I was, I was prepared to, uh, to sprint for my life. <laughs> if I took the bag off and the bee was like, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. We had, we had like, I think one year we had like four or five nests just Jesus. up in our like, carport and like underneath the awning and stuff so yeah get, just get, yeah just get that raid because that thing can project like 30 or 40 feet so you can okay, like you, just snipe it yeah you can just snipe it so <laughs> and, that, and that stuff like kills them like instantly like you like there's okay. like a like a bee like a net a wasp nest or whatever like there's like five or six nest. of them yeah you just you just spray real good um okay that, that'll do the All trick right. and you get some of that yeah i think like if you get like a local dollar dollar general i think they usually got them for like two for six bucks or seven bucks okay so and you can get the the extendo version <laughs> <laughs> that? it's like that's it's, it's like the, on it? was the it's like the big can and it's like 25 percent more so <laughs> it's got a scope it's got a muzzle on it it's, it's got, got a silencer <laughs> just get adam to come over there do a 360 no scope on yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> sweet so other than b b stuff nothing nothing else exciting no, no, just a bunch of yard work yeah. and shopping and yeah, sweet. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Nice. Yeah, yeah. How about you? How you doing? Doing good. We um we started finally painting our um our deck. Uh, we're painting it like we're pretty much painting it the whole thing black, like the the rails and stuff. So we started that. Um, which we're trying to get done before Kellen's birthday in two weeks. And because yep. I've got uh, the the gazebo I just bought came in today. Um, nice. So like, you know me, I mean, I'm like itching to get it together, but we're going to we're going to get it painted first and then and then I'll and then I'll get it up. So, yeah, yeah. That's so I'll idea. have everything ready for the uh, for the birthday party. But um, other than that, man, just uh, 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 like another kind of quick week. Um, I feel like every week is kind of quick now, but then mm-hmm. like the weekends are also super fast, too. So it's like, ah, but that just means we're closer to Tears of the Kingdom. We are. Uh, yeah, we are. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Is it two weeks from <laughs> this Friday or is it two weeks from? Uh, I think it's like 17 days or something like that, right? Like 17. I think it's day 17 now. OK, so we're. We're less than three weeks away. Yeah. I mean, it comes out the 12th. So we got what? Seven more days, seven, Shit, six more days. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. 18 days. Yeah. Yeah. Today's 18. Oh, my God. We're getting there, man. That's it's just wild. It's creeping That's up. so crazy. I feel like it took forever to get here. And now that and we're now like here, it's just like flying by. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm 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 just cannot wait for this game. I are, are you uh, taking Friday off? I think so. I think, I think so. so. I'll have to see. Yeah, I think so, because Brittany's birthday is on the 10th, but I don't know. I don't think we're going out of town or anything. I think we might just do something Saturday. Um, so mm-hmm. we'll uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take it off. Yeah. I'm still I'm still trying, man. Every time this freaking hot. Uh, stock app, I st- I'm still trying to get this collector's edition, but I've all but given up at this okay, point. I'm trying to get the I'm just trying to get the pirate Mithra Amiibo now. Oh, see, I got that easily. I am struggling big time. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll add it to my list and see. And then yeah, keep an eye out. And because I just went like on um, WarioWare, like or, or Wario64. Yeah, yeah. He just, uh, yeah. he just like put it up thing. on there. And I got it like super easily because I wasn't um, at first, but I was like, time. yeah. And I was like, I wasn't going to get it first, but then I was like, you know what? Let me, I said, like, let me just, let me just get it. I, I'm, I like collecting shit now. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, they look super good, too. Yeah, they do. And, dude, I can't... I bet, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the other Amiibos here in a second. But, 
yeah i'm just right, like right. i'm on my collector phase man i just i can't help it like i i see stuff warrior warrior 64 <laughs> post stuff i want it I see it i get it yeah i feel like ariana grande right now just <laughs> i see it i want it well we'll talk about dredge here in a second but i picked that up physical i wanted the special edition of that i'm i'm, I'm a madman i'm a madman nick <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah let's let's dive into what we've been playing um sweet i i, I finished metroid what, what you did yes i finished mr wow. prime remastered yeah. I was like, what, what are you talking about <laughs> I, I finished it so I'm, I'm probably gonna dive into fusion at some point in the next couple of weeks because i know that's like relatively short but yeah i i finished it up um i just grabbed a little bit of a like a guide and and, and yeah helped yeah. me out with the artifacts because i had like six or seven left um i really liked it i i still think dread is in, in the 2d metroids i think are just more of my my forte my steez um oh yeah i i felt like i, I don't love the map i, I don't uh, i don't love it as much okay as far as like you know and obviously like a 2d map is going to be a little bit easier to like read and navigate but I, I really feel like this game could have benefited from a fast travel like either every safe point is a fast travel or maybe you know, every save point can can fast travel you to the hub world, like back to your ship or something like yeah. that. I feel like it really could have used and, 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 you know, granted, this is a, you know, a, a remaster or whatever. So they're not changing anything uh, outside of like the controls. But, um, yeah, I felt like it really could have used it because there, there was a couple of times where I was getting an artifact and. I ended up running past one and then went back to the hub world and then like the guy was like, oh, there's there's another one right here. Yeah. Yeah, I I know what you mean. Like if if anything, I wish there was a way to unlock fast travel when you're at the point of collecting those talismans. Like maybe yeah. not like throughout the game itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Near the end, you know. And that's kind of hard to do because you can really collect a lot of the talismans yeah. as you go, depending on you know the and maybe the and maybe that's my problem is I just felt like going back and getting the artifacts was a little bit of like a slog. Yeah. Um because I feel like I feel like the pacing, like other than that, was like perfect. And then it's like, okay, now you need to go back and get all get all this stuff. Um You yeah, know, it's that, pretty that's... easy. You could still like get through the maps pretty quickly, but there's some areas where like you still have to fight all the enemies and they they reappear like super quickly um so yeah still really liked it yeah i I know what you mean like i don't think i used a a guide i just went off of like the the descriptions of the talismans that that you didn't have yet yeah and i did a lot of backtracking and going from area to area trying to trying to find it with no with no luck um yeah i mean i so, think i did like 70 yeah. percent of everything like total so like i was pretty stacked up till the i think i had like i think i was missing like three health bars i think um which i'm glad i had so much because that last like two phase boss fight was kind of bs kind of like like i, I really felt like it, maybe not necessarily the boss fight itself was because I, I think i beat it in like three tries Mm-hmm. But they really should have put a save point after the part where you're like climbing up the area with all the Metroids. And like you yes. pretty much have yes. to fight them because if you don't, they'll knock you off. Uh, and they, they, they do that stupid move where they, they grab you and you have to oh go into God, morph ball dude. form. Yeah, that's that move. Oh, so, yeah, I, I really felt that like that save point bad. should have been right after. I mean, they should probably. I mean, obviously, have one right after the Ridley fight, but they have one right after that spot. Well, um, they did have one right after the Ridley fight. Well, they did, yeah. But I'm saying they still have that one, but then also have another one right after um, that Metroid area, like maybe, or maybe just right, you know, right before the fight. I feel like that would have been that yeah. would have been really fair. Yeah, that that I forgot about that part. That was really frustrating. Yeah, because I tried like, to I tried to brute force it and try to run past most of them. I did too, but. Yeah, that, that's hard. It's hard when they when they grab onto you and yeah, you to and there's off. a lot. There's like a ton there's of a them, ton. and like and like they, 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 at that point, they're um, you have to use a specific gun mm-hmm. to do it. So yeah, it was it was it was kind of a pain. Um, and then I think it just like just trying to switch between the visors and the weapons like still feels a little bit clunky. Um, and I know there's a, I know there's like options you could do to to change that around. So maybe I should have done that. But um, I was like, you need a weapon wheel. 
Yeah, yeah, just like hold. Like I, I think if you would have held L down or something, and then just like it, it pauses the game and you you pick your weapon. I think that would have been totally fine. Yeah, because um, there was a couple times where I'm like I'm trying to switch to the weapon, and on like that first phase, like he'll kind of fake you out. He'll he'll be golden or whatever, so you can use your plasma. Pla- I don't know, blast or plasma whatever it's beam. called plasma beam, and then he'll fake you out and then he'll go to the ice beam and you're like crap. And then you gotta like, so like by the time I was finished with the game, my hands were like so cramped up just cause. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But... I remember, uh, I, I played the, the last boss in handheld yeah. and my hands were like, n- like numb. Yeah. Because and, and you don't, you don't have a, um, like a grip, do you? Hmm. Yeah. See, I see, I've got the, the, the satisfy grip, which is really, which is a really fantastic grip, but still hurts after, after so long. Yeah. So, but otherwise, well, I, I thought it was really good. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I went back and, and, and finished it up. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, gl- I'm glad he did, too. Now. Now you just need to finish Fire Emblem Engage. You know, I almost I almost was getting to play because I popped out. Um, I put Metroid back in this case and then I had put I had replaced Fire Emblem. I had I had Fire Emblem there. I was like, no, I want to play some Dredge. <laughs> <laughs> um well, well tell me some more about dredge how's yeah so um, how's that journey going? Yeah, it, it came it came in today so i, I really played okay. about to the point where the demo stopped um it's it, the oh, demo the save data not transfer it doesn't no okay um at least i don't i don't think it does the the demo is a little bit faster you you get like the dredging mechanic a lot slower than you did in the demo um and i haven't even gone to like the the island yet to um to get like the another one of those missions that i talked about a couple weeks ago but um mm-hmm. or last week but <clears throat> it's really good i it's it, the fishing's fun like the 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 yeah, atmosphere really is is super like it's super like it's a, it's a good vibe like to eerie. it but also like very eerie and mysterious and melancholy is that is that the right word yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um so yeah, I, I really, I really like. I know this is gonna be like one of those games where I just can just chill out and watch some TV or something, and and just kind of vibe out and and play. So yeah, I really I enjoyed I the it. demo. Yeah, that that was super fun. And you I, you can't like obviously you can't you know do a, do a lot of what you can do in the full game, mm-hmm. but I can see like where a lot of the mechanics are gonna are gonna build yeah. out, and that's really exciting. Dude, I I was playing earlier and like I went to the um. I think it's called the fishmonger. Who? It's the guy you sell the fish to. Yeah. And he's like, oh, um, uh, you know, you can now purchase uh crab crab baskets from me. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I don't know why I did it, but I was like, I like audibly was like, yes. Um, oh my god. And then yeah, you just take those and you you just drop them out in the ocean, and then two or three days later you come back and collect your oh, cool. collect okay. your crabs. So yeah, just a really cool, neat fishing game with a with an eerie spooky tail behind it so yeah i'm excited yeah i excited definitely want to play some more i mean at this point i, I would just need to pick it up yeah to play more. <laughs> i'll think you play more of the demo yeah <laughs> so yeah i'm I'm excited to, to, to play some more of that but um uh i did play briefly i played um oh gosh uh ghost wire ghost wire i played about an hour of it not not my cup of tea. I, I'm not I'm not vibing with yeah. it. I, I don't really like the enemy design. I don't think it's particularly spooky or scary. Um, and then as soon as like the skill tree stuff, I was like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I'm done. I'm good. Yeah, I just I, it... we talked about it last week, but I'm I'm just dumb with skill trees. I just I, I can't right it's now. It's so crazy because I used to love them. <sighs> I used to love them so much, but. Now that every game, now, now that every game has them, it's it's not really special. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about it last week, but uh, yeah, I just, I can't see a percentage, a percentage boost or something like that anymore. I just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and like, I, I feel like Ghostwire doesn't even need it. Yeah. You know, like, I, I think it could benefit from having upgrades to your, to your abilities. Yeah. Not necessarily in the form of skill trees, maybe just in the form of, Hey, you you find an upgrade, yeah, and it makes your it it gives you like an additional, you know, perk to your to your uh blast to your like whatever your your gun what do you call it like a gun like your little Naruto, Naruto blast it gives you like I don't know yeah and I, I didn't really feel it just didn't feel 
good to play either. It felt, it felt kind of floaty. Yeah, very floaty, kind of stiffish. I don't know. It just it, it didn't feel good. Um, yeah, but I think Dredge does also have a skill tree too. So, or, or I think well, not a skill tree. It's got like it's, upgrades. It's, up- it's upgrades. upgrades. Never mind. That's that's different than a skill tree, I guess. But <laughs> it's on a boat, man. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, I cut off for like a second. One second. Okay. Okay, I think I can hear you. Okay, we good. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we're good. Cool. We're good. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, Ghostwire. Maybe I try it again at another date, but I it just didn't. It just didn't click with me. Yeah, I've had a lot of Game Pass misses lately between yeah. Atomic Heart, Ghostwire. I feel like uh, Wolong. I, I mean, I liked it, but just not yeah, I do. If I can finish it, yeah, I do want to go back and play that game. I, I got. I think I got pretty pretty far into. I got a lot farther than you did. Um, I did like that a lot, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, yeah. Game, game pass. I don't know, man. It's, it's, it hasn't been hitting like it was last year. And I don't even, I can't even recall. And I, I mean, I, I got to play, play last year, but I got to play high fi rush, but, and finish that. But I mean, there was, there was like scorn was on there, which, you know, scorn, <laughs> scorn is scorn, scorn, is scorn. <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't great, but. I, it, it was it was short enough where like you could put it like you can play it for a night. Yeah, I mean, it obviously two. clicked with me enough for me to finish it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, Plague's Tale, you know, Plague Tale was on there. Right. Yeah. Plague's Tale. That was probably that, that was probably the best Game Pass game last year, uh, to be honest, which, you know, it was, a, it was a, an incredible game. So mm-hmm. I've got no no problem with Plague Tale. Yeah, that was a big win for for Game Pass to yeah. get that game. So. We'll see. I mean, they've got what the I mean, we don't talk about Game Pass anymore, but they've got some stuff coming up. Um, yeah, Redfall stuff like that. So I'll, I'll right, Redfall, Redfall yeah, next week. Yeah, God, that's next. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I keep thinking it's after Zelda. Yeah, it, it should be. It should be after Zelda. <laughs> it, it should be way after Zelda. It should. It, you know what it should be is, is it delayed. Yeah, it should be in June. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But it is what it is. It is what it um, is. Nick, you played some more Persona? I did, yeah. So I, I finished the first palace. I thought you were about to finished. say you finished the game. I was like, you fucking no, mad man. <laughs> no, I'm only like 10 hours in. Okay. Um, I really like the, the dungeon system in this game. So basically, if... For people who haven't played the game before... Um, you essentially have like a set number of days to complete a dungeon before. And in, in, in this case, at the beginning of the game, you have to complete the dungeon before you get expelled. And it's like, okay, you're going to, you're going to get expelled on May 3rd, whatever you have from April 14th to 15th until then to finish the dungeon. You can do it in your own time. You can get as far as you want into it and then leave. And then you could do like a day at the school and you can like buy more medicine. You could, you know, build relationships with your friends and that'll help you out in battle. Or you can try to persevere and spend each day, you know, going through. And when you're actually in the dungeon, time doesn't pass. It only passes when you leave and return to the real world. So I knocked it out in like a few days. I, you know, went through as much as I could at first. I ran out of healing items, essentially, essentially Hmm. came back out, got some more. Um, did another day at the school and then went back in and then maybe took like one or two more days and then got it done. And because I have so much time left between now and, and my expulsion, I can spend that time like building relationships with my peers and doing other things rather than having to spend my time crawling through the dungeon essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like a time management game in a way where you could wait until the last minute to do the dungeon and if you do and you don't complete it in time, then you have to start over from the beginning of that period. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, it's pretty high risk if you wait that long. Cause you have to, you know, you're going back 14 days essentially. Um, do you, do like, you lose progress like your stuff? It, yeah. I think it's like you'll, your save will revert. Oh, to wow. Okay. Day, whatever. Yeah. At least that, that's what I think. 
I think I think it's just like a straight up game over. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Um Yeah, so I just finished that that dungeon. Uh have yet to see the story ramifications of of what I'm doing, which is basically inception going into their their minds and changing their changing their heart, essentially. Yeah. Um so I've yet to see how that how the rest of this kind of like story arc plays out, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Really liking the combat. Really liking the the party system. It's like I said last week, super similar to Shin Megami Tensei Five. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the demons in that game, like a lot of the the personas in in this game, are you know straight out of SMT Five. Like it's the same characters. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of like reoccurring recurrent characters throughout throughout the series but yeah uh i don't know when i'm gonna finish this game because <laughs> yeah you, you, know. you took on like a massive game right before I zelda <laughs> i don't know why i did it because you're a madman <laughs> honestly like it, it's gonna be one of those things where like even if i come back to it a few months later i think it's still gonna yeah it's still gonna be fine like right. it's almost like it's almost like coming back to a show like yeah you, okay yeah yeah you, re- you recap a little bit and then you you start the next episode so speaking that's, that's of shows I'm... nick did you did you finish beef no i haven't finished it yet okay okay it, it, does it have like a crazy ending it has a ridiculous ending oh my gosh well we will obviously we won't spoil anything about the show but anybody that's watched beef it's it's incredible I'm nervous. I'm nervous about how it's going to end. It's 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 wild. It's 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 a it's a wild ride toward the last two episodes. But is yeah. it wild in a in a depressing way, or is it wild in a holy crap? I can't believe this is happening way. Holy crap, kind of way. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Glad it's not just a depressing ending. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's. I don't know. I won't say anything <laughs> else. But yeah, it, okay. it's it's really good. Yeah, it, it finishes really strong. I don't. I don't think it needs another season. I, I think it could absolutely end where it ends, but um, yeah, incredible. I, I think, um, is it Steven? Steven, I can't remember his, uh, his last name. The, the two, uh, the two, because it's two lead actors. Like it's, it's a female and a male. Um, they're both uh, like the Steven main Steven Yen. Steven Yen, okay. And Ali Wong. Ali Wong, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah they absolutely b- both deserve an Emmy for, for this show. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Persona. <laughs> oh, I, I had nothing else. Okay. Um, yeah, super fun. And then, yeah, just, yeah, I played the Dredge demo. I don't think I played anything else this week. I thought about picking up Advance Wars, but. I saw it at Best Buy. I was, I was, on, I was trying yeah. to find Dredge, but they didn't have it physical um, mm-hmm. at uh, Best Buy. And I saw they had like one copy, which my Best Buy is garbage. Like they never have anything in stock. Um, but they had one copy of Advance Wars. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Not, not enough time. No, but I heard good things. I heard it's I heard it's a really solid. Yeah, like, oh, man, I have a voucher. Like I have a remaining yeah, you do. Nintendo voucher that I could use. But uh, I kind of want to kind of want to. Yeah, kind of want to use it on, on Pikmin. Yeah. All right. Anything else you've been playing? It's been about it. All right. Well, let's. Uh, you want to switch over? Yeah. Let's then... go. Let's go and switch over. Let's okay. Go. All right. We'll be right back. All right. Um, you've got a topic of the week this week. I do. Yeah. With with Harrison with the anticipated release of Tears of the Kingdom, one ask, and I I don't have an answer prepared myself, so I need to think of one as well. Yeah. <laughs> but do you have any favorite? memories or moments from playing breath of the wild and i know it came out around the time callum was born yeah so that takes a lot of precedent and, and that's probably a lot of association with and, and see with now that, like i i remember loving this game but now that i'm trying to think of specific memories it's hard to think about because i mean the switch was brand new so like i was i was constantly in, in between like handheld and yeah trying the tv and playing like one two switch and other stuff so like and plus, plus you know dealing with a newborn um yeah i mean 
I, I don't know if I have a favorite moment. It just there was just it, it was so much to take in at the time. Like it was, you know, I, I think it perfected open world games and and it's kind of crazy because like I, I thought when Breath of the Wild came out and how it just nailed open world and climbing and stuff like that, where you can just climb in anything. Um, no other games really copied that formula. Um, yeah. not yeah, I mean, not never. not really, you know, um, I mean, like Assassin's Creed, they, they changed it to where you could really climb more um, than certain structures, you know, from the from the older games. But um, yeah, no other game really tried to copy Breath of the Wild um, to that mm-hmm. to that degree and, and nail it. And. I. I don't know. I thought more games would, but maybe it's just too hard to to try to nail that. But I, I just like the freedom. I like the the freedom of being able to do whatever yeah. I wanted. Um, it was a fresh of breath air, or a, a breath, <laughs> a, a, a breath of breath air, <laughs> a breath of fresh air. That there was the 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 mini map was not boggled down with like all these, yeah, you know, Far Cry, Assassin's all Creed icons, icons and, and stuff. It was kind of Okay, what is that in the distance? Let me pinpoint it and go back to it either now or maybe I can go back to it later. I really like that. I liked just having like a clean slate. Again, not yeah. there's not a million different icons pulling me in a million different directions. It's it's literally just Oh, I want to go over there. Hey, what's that over there? That looks like a shrine. Let's do that. Oh, is that a that may be a, like a Korok puzzle. Let's let's do that. Um I think that I think that was probably my favorite part. It was just just the freedom of choice and not being. I, I mean, obviously there were side quests and stuff like that, but um, yeah. you just, you weren't always being pulled in a a direction, um, which you know some people may not like. You know, you, you might want to have something that kind of um, baby like, you know babysits you, you and stuff like that. But you know, this game just kind of once you get off like the Great Plateau, you just kind of are on your own and you can do whatever you want. And I really I really like that about it. Yeah, the uh, the sense of freedom. Yeah, right. Like the moment you you walk out of the cave was just such a cool feeling. Like, uh, not to give too much hyperbole, but like it, it was it truly felt like a game changing game mm-hmm. when we were playing it. And like I was playing it because my my friend Lawson he he took me to Best Buy to to pick it up but I was yeah. I was playing it like in the car on the way home yeah <laughs> I was having that like that first experience like just in the car you know yeah. just just riding home from from Best Buy and like ah oh, man all those like first moments of finding like finding a stone talus mm-hmm. and then that was on the Great Plateau and like being able to climb that and you know using oh like figuring out like oh if I use like a sledgehammer on its rock on on his back that is a lot more damage yeah and like kind of like figuring out little details like that and like setting fire to the grass gives you an updraft and yeah. you can you can blow up in the air it's good and then Tears getting the uh be crazy. getting Rivali's gale yeah and being able to just jump into the sky essentially like that that felt like another game changer and I don't know a lot of a lot of cool moments in this game, like cool yeah. moments of <clears throat> of discovery of just yeah finding a super small thing that that is really cool. And then I think my favorite thing, and this wasn't like something that I discovered, but something that you know we we saw that we could do through the through the E three twenty sixteen demo or through like the treehouse demo, but shield surfing. Shield surfing yeah. is so cool, and just like running up to the top of a mountain and shield surfing down. Yeah, like that. I remember doing that a ton. Like that was so fun. Yeah, it, it just it, it just had so many. It it's it's crazy because now that we've seen Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild feels like a tech demo compared to this thing. Like it, it feels like this is everything that Nintendo wanted to do but just didn't have time. And now that they've got this ready to go, you know, we're finally getting like the culmination of of all their ideas into into Tears of the Kingdom. Um, cause there was, I mean, I, I had posted like a clip of like, we were talking about, you know, Cheers of the Kingdom, like it's going to be game of the decade. And there's so many comments like the game's not even out yet, bro. Like, how are you already stating that? Like, it's crazy that people are like this. Like you're, you're someone called me delusional for, for saying stuff. I was like, I was like, man, like, can we not just be like hyped up? Like, yeah, 
like what 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 game are you excited for like i'm not gonna if you do a video i'm not gonna go and be like oh yeah you're delusional because you have an opinion like it's it's all subjective and it's it's all fine right um but like breath of the wild is is regarded as not only the best Zelda game of all time, but one of the best games of all time, if not the best game of all time. So you take that and from the stuff that we great. Yes, we have not played Tears of the Kingdom. We don't know how it runs. Um, it's probably going to run 30, you know, whatever. Less, yeah. um, but from what we've already played with Breath of the Wild and the craziness that we've seen with the tears. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that this game is going to be better than that. And if it's not, then it's not right. But I, I have confidence in in yeah. the Breath of the Wild team. So I, I don't think we're at, at this point, like with what with, with what we know, I don't think it could be worse than Breath of the Wild. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like unless, unless it just like runs really like if unless it just runs like horribly. That's yeah. the only thing that like could possibly worry me. Everything else looks incredible. Like the voice acting sounds better. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, the you know, story seems really good. The story, yeah, the story seemed like Breath of the Wild almost kind of had like a non-existent story, really. Like, mm-hmm. I don't really remember much. Um, but this seems like it's going to be a really good story. Um, and just there's there's underground caverns. There's there's the sky stuff. There There's so much that we that we don't know, like how, how it works. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. And, and I think. Nintendo is really smart in that they're not showing a lot because yeah. what's going to drive what's going to drive engagement, sales, all that stuff is going to be people discovering things and yeah. showing that to other people. Like, did you guys know you could do this? Like that's yeah. what their uh that's what their commercial that came out today was titled. It's like you can do this. Yeah, you YouTube um like shorts and and regular YouTube videos and TikTok. It's going to yeah. be we I mean we called this months ago, but it's going to be bananas. It's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. All the stuff it's that like, we can it's like Elden Ring, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the sense of discovery. Yeah. You know, finding out new things, finding out new ways to do things. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's going to be the best part. And like, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really excited for, for my trip that yeah. I'm leaving on like the 18th, but like, I'm going to miss out on a little bit of that because I, I'm not going to be able to, to, to kind of like be online at the same time, but yeah, that's going to be nice in a way. Because I'm just discovering all of this for myself, and right. I can't really get spoiled on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, cool. yeah, yeah. Breath of the Wild is fantastic, and yeah, the, the just the, all the freedom you have, and then added with the um, uh, new mechanics, mechanics, fusing. fusing hands. Yeah, it's it's gonna be cre- it's gonna be incredible. Like I just I have just I have utmost confidence in them. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention, but I did jump into Breath of the Wild again this week. Okay, yeah, I did, I did I see just, it in your played in your recently played list. Yeah. I just, I played a little bit, you know, rode around the on the master cycle. Yeah, did some jumps. <laughs> I did some I jumps. <laughs> tried the uh, the trials again, like the, the oh yeah yeah trials. They're pretty tough. I, I never finished it, but yeah, I just gave that a shot and then just explored a little bit. It was, yeah, it's fun, man. Yeah, it's a great time. Yeah, we're obviously hyped. I mean, if if you if you don't yeah. if you don't if you're not as hyped and you and you still think it's seventy dollar DLC, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I don't think you were gonna get it to begin with. Yeah, I I, yeah. I, I don't I don't know what to tell you because yeah, I'm not even gonna go there. I don't, I don't, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> don't don't say it. D- don't make a comparison. Got to wear Riding Rock with seventy dollar DLC. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like it's <laughs> if you want to compare and be like a, and, and be an ass about it, like yeah, there was a lot of reused assets in that game, and a lot of the maps were the same. Like, but nobody compared it to that. It, it called it seventy dollars DLC, and I don't think it is. I thought Riding Rock was incredible. So like, why is it? Why is it Nintendo? <laughs> like, why do people just come after this game in particular when it's it's got like the chops of the previous game? And it took them six years. It took them six years to put this game out. There's no way. It's yeah. just DLC. It's and, not a. It's not like Majora's Mask, where they're just reusing assets. And, and even that game, even that game out. was like that was different. It felt completely different. Yeah, you could you could definitely tell that they were all the same assets, like for the most part. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, it took them like two years. Like I think was it like two years to make that game? Three years? Like a year. 
I think it was longer than that, wasn't it? Maybe two. Yeah. Maybe. Um. Anyways, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think we have to worry about anything. And if and if you don't want to pay seventy dollars for it, then just don't, and it'll be okay. Uh, you could buy the the voucher. Yeah, buy the voucher. Only, you only pay fifty bucks for it when you think about it. Yeah, just get the, just get the voucher. Yeah. Um. Let's move on to the uh, the news, Nick. You want to read the uh, read the first one? Yes, sir. So- announcement last week uh nintendo announced xenoblade chronicles 3 future redeemed and it's launching tomorrow which is what april 25th yep yeah so this is this is the big final story dlc for xenoblade chronicles 3 it's gonna uh pretty much bring together the story of one two and three it has it has uh rex from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, it's got Shulk, Xenoblade Chronicles 1, they're all there for some reason. <laughs> uh, we have Matthew, which I believe is Noah and Mio's offspring, or N in, in and M's offspring, I don't, we don't really know. I have no idea what was, what was going on in the trailer, um, I was like, this all just looks amazing, and we, we saw what we think is me again, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, I, I miss this game, like, I miss these characters. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, yeah, basically, all, all the founders, all the all the six characters that you're playing as, they're probably a descendant of somebody from Xenoblade Chronicles one and two, whether it's Rex and Pyra or. And and I've seen things about about Riku, like he's like apparently like Riku's there, yeah. Well, he's like across every like I don't know, like I don't know what his deal is. So he's just a standard no pun. Yeah, just standard no pun. I don't know. Yeah, yeah so this, this looks amazing. It looks like it's. Uh, like a full on like twenty hour. They said they said it's supposed pandemic. to be longer, like b- bigger than Torna, the Golden Torna Country. Torna is about twenty hours. Yeah, so I, I still need to get play Torna actually. Yeah, I, I this made me want to go back and like beat one, pick up two, and yeah. then I'm not gonna do that first. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this game or get this DLC and play it. But um, oh yeah, I forgot you had one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I picked it up. Um, yeah. yeah, before three came out and. It didn't click with me, but now that I've played three and fell in love with it, I think I'll I think I'll enjoy the battle system a little bit more than I did. I think it, I think the three clicked with me, the battle system did, but they're pretty close to what one is. But well, three is just, just a mix of one and two. Yeah, it's just like streamlined a little bit. So I think I think I'll understand one's combat system a little bit better than yeah. than I did before. Um, plus I'll yeah, plus I'll drop down the easy the, probably the easy mode. <laughs> yeah. Because I think three in three's battle system, you have the the left side attacks and the right side attacks. Yeah, I think one of them is kind of like reminiscent of Xenoblade One, and then the other one is reminiscent of Xenoblade Two. Okay, so it's it's I mean it's all like fairly similar. Okay, but I would say one is the weakest. Okay, yeah, I need I need to play. I need, I need like, to the, the and combat. It. The combat is the weakest. Not not yeah. the story. Yeah, I'm super excited. I'll be picking this up tomorrow and playing it. Um, just add it to it. Just add it to everything else. Add it to the list. I do want to finish this one before Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, I think I can. But yeah, yeah, this seems pretty big. Seems like a large, a large, large deal. Large chunk. I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> I, I'm curious. I know you you kind of alluded to this earlier, but oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is coming out way earlier than expected, um, which is kind of funny because Xenoblade Chronicles Three was was pushed up by two yeah. months, which is like unprecedented. So, what's your theory on on why we're getting all these DLCs? Like the like the Fire Emblem, we got. Yeah, so I'll say the, yeah, Fire Emblem. The like they they knocked that stuff out super quick. They knocked. I mean, yeah. not necessarily knocked out Xenoblade, but you know, I I wasn't expecting that to be until like sometime in like June or July. <clears throat> I think we're getting a direct in June, and I think we're getting a Switch to announcement. I think that's what's going to happen. Okay. I think that's what's going to happen. Mean, set for a set for a fall release. I think you could be right. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's because we don't because we, we don't know anything else right now from like other than Pikmin, which is in July. Um, we don't know anything else about Nintendo in the latter half of the year. So I, I think. I don't know. I think it. I think it makes sense. Because there's there's the, the the Pokemon thing, they're 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 getting a, a a graphical update in 
fall of this year or winter of this year. Um, the rumored. Rumor, rumor, yeah, yeah rumored. Yeah. So I think that would fall in line with, hey, you know, here's the next switch or whatever. It's kind of, it's kind of BS that they wait. They're going to wait that long to do something like that. But what, whatever, because that game could <laughs> that game could it look way it. better anyways without needing new hardware. But um, that's besides the point. So, yeah, I, I think they're just pumping out all the stuff. I think they want to get Tears of the Kingdom out there. It, that'd be the, the big final game. You know, of the Switch. You know, we'll have Pikmin, and but Pikmin. Pikmin's, Pikmin's, you know, Pikmin, but Pikmin's not going to do huge, huge numbers. Um, it'll, it'll probably be the best selling Pikmin um, just because yeah. it's on the Switch. Um, but yeah, I think I think we'll get our June Direct and I think I think they'll announce the Switch the next whatever's next. So. So, OK, so we have Pokemon DLC. Sorry, I, did you mention the Splatoon DLC? Uh, I cut out a little bit, so I didn't. Catch um, some of no, it. I did not mention that. I actually completely forgot about the Splatoon, Splatoon, Splatoon stuff. When when does has that gotten a release date? I think it's slated for later this year, and okay. in early okay. 2024. So that that would oh, kind okay. of align with what you're saying as well. Yeah, or that that could kind of like be the boost to Splatoon three. Yeah. So like not not necessarily a new game, but maybe they have kind of a new like season of content, so to speak. Yeah, that could be that could be cool. Yes, I mean, so between that and Pokemon, and I'm assuming some sort of flagship title announcement, either a new Mario game or Metroid Prime Four for for holiday. Yeah, because when when does the when does the Mario Blu-ray come out? Oh, I don't I don't know. I don't think probably June or July. Yeah, I guess it depends on how long the theatrical run is. Yeah, but I can I can see this going for a while. I mean, I, I mean, I can honestly see them announcing Metroid and Mario at the direct. Just be like, hey, you know, here's, you know, you love the Mario movie. Here's the next, here's the next installment of Mario. You know, Super yeah. Odyssey two or or whatever. Um, and then. You know, hey, did you love the Metro Prime Remastered? Here's Metro Prime 4 coming out, you know, holiday 2023. Hmm. Do you think those two could be system sellers? I mean, I know Mario could. Oh, I think I think people would absolutely play. Like if it was, I don't know if they would make it exclusive. I think it's going to be. Cross. Yeah, I think it's going to be cross cross gen for for this year and then they'll obviously you know do the same thing like xbox and playstation does but um i think i think they'll i think i think it's dumb not to i mean you have 100 plus million units um mm-hmm. that'd be crazy if they didn't do that but yeah i think it'll be i don't think it'll be cross but i think you know hey here's a graphical update they'll look way better on the, the next thing so yeah i think you I don't know I might, I might it might just be a pipe dream but you know who knows man who knows and then you have the Tears of the Kingdom DLC and the, the graphical upgrade. Yeah. See? I mean that could be that could be huge. That's not confirmed. I just want everyone to know that I'm I'm not saying that that's confirmed. Yeah. I just I'm I'm speculating. Yeah, I mean that could that could be huge. I mean you put the DLC out and you know whenever whenever this the switch next switch launches. Yeah. You have a update to maybe push it to sixty frames. But I don't even know if <laughs> I don't yeah. know if that's possible given uh, what Xbox is doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, before we move on from uh, from this topic, real quick, um, what is your preferred like DLC time frame after a game comes out? Like, do you? Because I know whenever like there's like day one DLC, like it's kind of be like, oh, you get the you get the, uh, you get the founder season pass, and here's you know, here's wave one or whatever, like Nintendo does. Mm-hmm. Like I find that to be kind of BS. Like you could just include that in the game, but w- what's your preferred, yeah. like time to wait for like a, like a good, like a substantial DLC, like, you know, burning shores from horizon or, you know, this, you know, Xenoblade, like a few months, a year is a year too long. Like, yeah, what's I, your preferred? I'd say like six months, six months. Yeah. Yeah. Six months to six to nine months after release, I think is best. Yeah. Um, because because otherwise people people have moved on. Like I personally, like I 
I, I tend to move on pretty quickly from games after I finish them. Like even with a game like Fire Emblem, like I don't want to go back through it. And, and this is also in tandem with me not loving the way Nintendo does DLC because yeah, for all of their four wave <clears throat> DLCs, the first three are kind of like nothing DLCs. Yeah. <laughs> like why would I jump in in wave one and I can play as, you know, I can have Hector from Fire Emblem when I can just wait for all of the DLC to come out and, and play it all at once. Yeah. And it's kind of the same for Xenoblade. Like I wasn't interested in in getting two additional heroes and some more challenge missions. Yeah. Like I was I was ready for the the story DLC. So like Yeah. I mean, when did Xenoblade come when did that come out? Like July? July. Okay, so ten months? About nine months yeah. after release. Like that's, so that's a good that's, that's a, a good time timeline. Frame. Yeah. yeah. For like a substantial chunk of DLC, like this is like twenty plus hours. Mm-hmm. I think that's good. What, what about something like, obviously, you know, Elden Ring? Like, is it? I mean, when they, when they eventually uh, release, you know, the Erd Tree DLC, like, I mean, we'll go back to it, but for sure. But I mean, it'll be well over a year. I mean, it's already over a year now. Mm-hmm. Like, is that is like a, you know, is that too long? I don't know if it's too long because that's going to be so huge. I yeah. just hope that with the DLC, you start from nothing. See that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, like I think that's good, scratch. which I, I think, like I with... think you will. I think you will from yeah. what I've seen and if people speculate and stuff, but yeah, that, 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 that makes way sense. you don't have to, you don't have to be at a certain spot in the story. Yeah. Which like, I mean, like the Xenoblade level. DLC, like you're, you're playing as, completely new characters yeah and i like so. that because yeah you're you're pretty much just playing a new you're playing a new xenoblade game yeah exactly which is cool so, yeah i think i'm on the same page like i think i think like six and nine is like the like the sweet spot and then anything after it, it like like the resident evil dlc was yes. kind of hard to go back to for me mm-hmm. um just because i was compl- like i love resident evil 8 but going back to it it felt it felt like kind of like an old game almost like it felt like yeah, not as good as uh, you know. Obviously, it's when dated. I dated, yeah, I felt it felt a little bit dated. Yeah, um, so going back to that was a little bit of a challenge, but I still had a good time. But I mean, if they would if they would have had to put that DLC out four or five months after that, that would have been fine, just yes. fine. So, um, and that's why I hope with the RE4 DLC, like they haven't announced like the 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 Ada Wong like separate ways the separate ways DLC yet. But like I hope they don't wait until next year. I'd rather get that maybe over the summer or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I think Resident Evil 4 plays better than 8, so I feel like that's gonna be an easy game to pick back up. But, um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think about six and nine is like a good, a good sweet spot. What, what's your favorite DLC? <sighs> Probably like Elder Scrolls, like Shivering Isles from okay, from um, uh. Oblivion or that or like Night Night Nights of the Nine, like all that DLC was really good. But Shivering, Shivering Isles was like the first like huge piece of DLC. Like it was a whole new yeah. area. Um, I love that. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other stuff. I I really loved uh, Borderland One's Borderlands One Undead. Oh, the DLC. Undead Nightmare, like or not undead the Undead Nightmare. Nightmare. Well, Undead Nightmare was really good too. From from the first Red Dead Redemption, that was fantastic. Um, but yeah. yeah, I remember that we were playing out in the mountains where you got to pick up the pumpkins and, and all that stuff. Like, that was Zombie fun. Island of yeah. Dr. Ned. Yeah, was, Borderlands actually had some great DLC. Was Cromorax a DLC? Or is that part of the main game? I feel like it was DLC. How do you spell that? Because if that if that is that's that's probably one of my favorites because I remember us playing just hours of just trying to beat that damn thing. It is DLC. It's in the the secret army of General Knox. Oh, there we go. That, that's one of my favorites. Then I love that DLC. That was oh my gosh, that was such a fun boss. Yeah, I remember we, trying we, to like cheese it and stuff, like yeah, trying to like yeah, hide in the corners. The yeah, we played. We do. We played so much Borderlands one together. I that was a fantastic game, game. So much. That's and then and, and I, I didn't I didn't not like Borderlands 2. I think that's when I fell off like two. I like I beat it. But I, I just it just didn't click with me as hard. And maybe, maybe because we just didn't we weren't living in the same house anymore. And it just didn't feel the same. Kind of like Smash Brothers to me. Like I didn't like once we. 
you know, once like melee was and was done and like brawl came out, like it just didn't feel the same. I don't know. Yeah. Wait, were were we in the same house when when brawl was? We when, yeah, we were. Well, yeah, brawl, but but Borderlands. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure we were, weren't we? Yeah, because right? Borderlands came out like 2007, like right or 08. Yeah, because I yeah I didn't yeah. move out until 2010, and when I okay. went to college. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm, I'm just reading about Chrome Rocks. The Halo Two map pack, the one that was like physical that you we bought. Yes. In Florida, that was amazing. I know that's just like maps, but um, it was still cool that it was, it was still, like a separate. Yeah, a separate. I still disc have that. I still have that 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 uh that disc. 20 bucks yeah what so did it good have on it i don't even remember it, it had some really good maps man gosh can't remember the names but there were some really fun ones uh let's see it had containment containment yeah warlock warlock uh, sanctuary and turf oh wow Wait. no it had more than that didn't it was it just five no there's more uh, okay because it, it had what was the one that was what, like a that was like a city that you not not um that was halo yeah that was halo two. god dude halo two had some good, amazing maps um the one that had like the train that would like fly through it remember that oh, one terminal terminal yeah oh terminal was so good that was uh, a dlc map wow it was yeah it was part of that map pack uh relic relic yes that relic. was a dlc map yeah relic gemini Gemini. Yep. Elongation, the one with the containers that yep. they go across. Dude, That's Halo 2. Oh my god. I, I, I need to play um I need to play the Master Chief collection now. Yeah. God. Backwash, that one wasn't great. Yeah, that was like the swampy one, right? I cannot believe that Turf was in a DLC. Turf what, what Turf the, was like what the, the streets one, right? Halo 2. Yeah, yeah. Um, we played a ton on dude, turf. turf was so good. Um, Halo 2 I had what uh, coagulation. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the what's the one with the oh. wheel? Like the the fan, the big fan. Lockout. Oh no, not lockout. Um, Lock, Zanzibar. Well, Zanzibar. Yeah, Zanzibar. Lockout. Lock, lockout's like all time one of the all time best. Yeah. Um. Okay, it had ascension. Ascension. Ascent, oh, dude, ascension was so good. Why did I think that was Halo Three? It was Halo Three. They had Ascension. Yeah. They, they had DLC for it. It was, I think, it was called something different. But uh, Ivory Tower. Oh, dude. Beaver, Beaver Creek, Why does Infinite Beaver not Mons? have these maps? Like, it, there's, no, it's no excuse. Like Rat Headlong. Race, Rat oh. Race. Where's Rat Race? Rat Race yeah. is so good for Halo Three. Yeah. I'm getting this started for Halo Two. God. Found all oh, Foundation. Foundation. Amazing. Foundation was fantastic. And then there was. OK. Did you ever play one called Desolation and Tombstone? Those they were like additional blast tacular maps. Yeah, this they would. They, they, yeah, that wasn't part of like that map pack wasn't thing. Part of the map pack. Yeah, they, they came out after. Mm. Oh, damn. Halo 2 man. maps are bangers. God. Yeah, because Jim and I was the one that had like the little the warp things at like the top of it and you could like mm -hmm. stand behind him and you'd always melee oh yeah you just can't there what dude <laughs> with, with the game with it just it just had like the level up system in it but with nothing else nothing else in there no 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 grinding no you know mm -hmm. there was no extra nonsense like it was just pure gameplay and like I don't think games will ever be like that again. No, it just. It, it, I don't know, man. Like the like the lack of kind of like the the less you had, the more creative you had to be. Yeah, and and that's and, why I like Infinite so much. I, that's why I genuinely like that game. Is it's just it doesn't. I mean, yeah, it's got all the you know, it's got the battle pass stuff, which is fine. But like, there's just it's just you and your guns and the guns you pick up. Sorry, and that's it. Yeah. No superfluous BS to it. It's just yeah, simple, simple no. in a way. Well, I didn't know we'd go off on a Halo Two tangent, but uh, <laughs> but here we are. Um, yeah, that is a top tier. That's a top tier DLC. Yeah, right there. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, the DLC. That's right. That's right. 
Uh, yeah, other than that, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's stuff I'm not thinking about. Um, but I can't think of anything right now. Uh, I, I'm just quickly looking up a list of best. Like Sky, DLCs Skyrim stuff time. was really good. Like the 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 werewolf DLC and the vampire DLC was always was really good. Um, you know, I know the Witcher three two DLCs yeah, are fantastic. Sick. I haven't I haven't played those yet, but Blood and Wine. Shivering and, Isles uh, is number two on this list. What's number one? Blood and Wine. Blood and Wine. Okay. Yeah. I I need to play that. I need to go back and jump into Blood and Wine. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. <laughs> Makes me really excited for uh for tomorrow. Yeah. Um so a little bit of confusion about Hi Fi Russia's success and kind of asked the ultimate question of is Game Pass hurting like sales? Is it hurting Xbox in the long run? Um, because obviously game like Hi Fi Rush came out, like you got shadow dropped, it was so many people were playing it, it was highly regarded. Um, but then who who came out and said that it wasn't? Was it Jeff Grubb? Mr. Mr. Jeff Grubb. But he kind of but I saw that he tweeted and kind of backtracked and said that it, it didn't really mean it to be that way, right? Yeah. But but everyone took it and ran with it. Yeah. Basically he said that it it didn't do what Microsoft wanted it to do, whether that was sales or driving Game Pass subscriptions or whatever have you, whatever whatever metrics that that they use. He's like, it, it wasn't as successful as as they wanted it to be. But like, I, I don't understand. Like, if that's the mentality, like a shadow dropped game that is like a really gorgeous game and plays really and it's really fun, isn't going to drive sales. It's going to get all the people that already subscribed like really excited. It may be word of mouth will help a little bit and say, hey, you know, there's this really awesome game that just dropped. You know, let me let me finally subscribe to the Game Pass and see what this thing is. Like, maybe that's what they were intending. But I think like Starfield is something like that'll probably see a huge boost, like big AAA games are going to see mm-hmm. a huge boost for Game Pass. So Game Pass has always confused me because it's like it's like how much money how much money can it? How much money can it make? Is it making enough money to justify s- not selling the game? Because I know the, the game still has sales, of course, but how much like sales correlates? Yeah, like the the UK weekly sales charts came out, and uh, Minecraft Legends, the the Microsoft game or the Xbox game, yeah. Only five percent of the physical copies sold were on Xbox, and like seventy five percent were on Switch. Yeah. So, I mean, and and I guess that makes sense because because one UK like that's a primarily PlayStation focused. It is, yeah. Uh, country, and then two, like, yeah, it's on Game Pass. So why would you buy it? Exactly. But is that a double edged sword? Of like, no one's gonna buy, no one's gonna buy anything on Xbox especially if it's multi-platform because you'd either just wait for it to come to game pass Mm -hmm. or you would just buy it on your preferred console. Yeah. I don't know, man. I I don't know how it's, I don't know how it's making money. Yeah. I I would love to see like something come out from Xbox. Like I know back in the day, like everyone kind of moaned whenever the big three would have like their sales charts and like how well this stuff did like at their presentations before they announced stuff. Like I kind of missed that a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I would, you know, if, if Xbox, if game pass fails in the long run, like I would love to see like a book to come out of it or something showing like, you know, and I know a lot of, a lot of these developers like will sign like a, you know, um, yeah, NDA. NDA and stuff like that. So they can't talk about it, but, um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's 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 always kind of confused me a little bit of how they make money off of it. I know like subscriptions, um, you know, the game costs sixty bucks. If you get them in fifteen bucks a month, you get them in for four or five months. Like that pays for the game, and now you've got them continuously play, paying. But I, I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I don't know how it can outweigh selling. 10 plus million copies of Halo Infinite. Yeah. Versus having 20 million people sign up for $1 a month and then cancel. Yeah. I don't know. I was I was pretty high on Game Pass back in 2020, you know, when when they when they had their uh 
their integration with EA mm -hmm. and they really just had a, like a lot of good stuff coming to Game Pass. But at this point, like I haven't been playing a ton from Game Pass. I've been trying a lot of games. Yeah. But haven't really finished a ton. And even even games yeah. like Persona 5, like that's on Game Pass, but I chose to buy it on the Switch because I prefer to to play portably. Yeah. So like you even have those circumstances where like I, I don't I guess I don't know what it's like what it's gonna be for. Yeah, and I, I don't think that we would be even have this conversation if they actually had first party games, <laughs> like you know, big yeah. ones coming out, like you know, we've got our forts, so we got our Halo. And that's it. Like, you know, that this conversation, like maybe, you know, in two years from now will be completely different and we'll we'll praise Game Pass again because you know, they've they finally all these studios that they've acquired and you know, all this big talk they had and all these huge AAA games, like we'll finally see the culmination of all this hard work that Phil Spencer's been doing in the team. But But for now it feels like smoke and mirror. It, it does. And then but the Redfall stuff, like being only thirty frame per second, you know, we talked about it last week, but it feels bad. Like it just they they just can't get a win. And while Half I Rush was a good game. We, we need like that big thing and yeah and it, and you know we don't know we don't know how redfall is like i'll certainly will try it um and see how it reviews but like you know starfield's the biggest thing and that's something you know that still you guys acquired yeah but you know we still don't know if that's gonna be delayed or not it, it absolutely could and it could absolutely run like dog dog crap when it launches because because it's a bethesda game and that's what they kind of do so yeah and i'm just kind of like I'm tired of all the the Xbox marketing team, like Aaron Greenberg, coming on Twitter and saying like, "Oh, like please, like just be patient. Like this next year is going to be the biggest year for Xbox." We've been patient and, for like three years. <laughs> yeah, like that's been said for the past three years, and there's there's ultimately not much to show for it aside from Halo Infinite and a few other titles like Forza Five. Yeah, Forza Horizon Five. Yeah, but. Like, what are all these studios? <laughs> what are all these studios doing? Yeah, like, where, where's the Valve? Where, where's, you know... Where is any game from your 2020 presentation? I was I was so high on that 2020 presentation. Mm -hmm. and it was good. Yeah, and, and we've gotten, like, nothing since. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I almost feel like they cursed Silk Song. By by showing it in their presentation, now I feel like it's definitely never going to come out. What in last year's presentation? Yeah. When, when was last year? Was that in June? It was June. Okay, so we've got like what three months, two months, two months before they lied a to month, us. Really? <laughs> yeah, a month. Eh? You want to switch over? Yeah, let's switch over, and then we'll then we'll wrap up. All right. Um, yeah, two, two months until Silk Song. Yeah. I, I, so. I was hoping it would, well I'm glad it didn't get shadow drop because now that we got the news of like the Xenoblade like I'm I'm that would have been way too much on my plate I think I would have just got so much anxiety of stuff to play <laughs> um so but yeah I want to play that game and like I just don't see Silk Song dropping after Zelda I think it's going to be a little bit after like way after mm -hmm. like maybe a few months after but you know different games you know different audience more or less but yeah, uh, it's yeah. going to be a big game nonetheless. So I don't know. Um, I hope it lives up. I think I it really will. Do. There, yeah. There's so much, so much hype riding on uh, Silk Song. It's crazy. I, I feel for the team. I really do. Um, next story, uh, Dead Island 2, uh, which I I forgot came out, to be honest, um, which I, it's, yeah. it's 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 reviewed pretty well, but like I it just kind of like, yeah, like shadow dropped on me in like mm -hmm. my mind because like I just forgot that it was coming out. Um, so it sold one million copies in what three three days, three days two days, yeah. Yeah, um, three which days. is which is great. You know this this was the game that was literally announced ten years ago, had that really cool trailer, oh, yeah. uh, and it's just been in development hell ever since. And yeah, from what we've seen, it looks like it's a really good Dead Island game. Like I know like the the gore is like crazy, like all the um, like the 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 body, the, the, the dysmorphia, like the and yeah, the... is is like crazy. Um, I, I I think I'm done with zombie games for for a long time. I, like that style of zombie games, like I I 
you know, I skipped out on Dead Island or uh, Dying Light. Um, mm. And yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm not I'm not into zombies too much anymore. Uh, I think if it was like a third person zombie game, I I might be a little bit more into it. Yeah, but yeah, first yeah, first person like I feel like that only goes so far with with yeah. zombie games. And... and I know it's not necessarily an open world game, right? It's like more of like an open zone, like Dead Island yeah, one was. Like open zone. Yeah, which which I think will lend it well. Yeah. Like I think that's better for it than than having it completely open open yeah. world. But I mean, I've heard good things, but I, I I'll probably I'll probably just pass up on it. Um, and then you want to read the last story, Nick? Yeah. Uh, today, I don't know if this was directly from from uh, from Gorilla, but Horizon Three was essentially confirmed to be in development, which isn't super surprising. Like, you know, yeah, the first two games did really well, and it seems like that. The, the Burning Shores DLC is also doing well. And I saw the final boss of that DLC. I don't know if you've seen it circulating on Twitter. No. It it looks insane. Oh, is that like that huge that huge yeah. like creature or whatever? Yeah, I did see that on Twitter. Like um, that I forgot like it was they, <clears throat> they are doing a really good job around that team of of taking advantage of the PS5 hardware yeah. because no shot that thing could run on the PS4. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's what everybody was saying. Oh, yeah, it's like, there's wow. no way this DLC runs on the PS4. Yeah, um, which is so great. You know, it feels it feels good for something to finally feel next gen, if you will. You know, we're in the yeah. current gen, but it's feeling next gen. So, you know, it feels good. You know, we 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 figured it would be PlayStation that would do it. You know, I think I think Spider Man's going to feel that way too when that comes out. Um, I can't wait to see what that game looks like. Uh, you know. Uh, and then, uh, what else is coming on PlayStation? Oh no, I'm thinking of um, uh, Hellblade. Hellblade is going to look just it just Hellblade's looks it, look it just looks game. incredible. Um, but who knows? That game could be like two years away at this point. Um, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, and then I, I was I thought about something and then I immediately forgot about it. Oh, we I think there's going to be some announcement or something for Armored Core soon. I heard I yes, saw on Twitter yeah, kind of circulating around, right? Yeah, like, that we're going to get like an like announcement or release date for, or something. For September, August. Yeah, which is I, I've never played an Armored Core game, but, you know, we're we're super high on FromSoft. Like they just they can't seem to to miss. So I'm, Dude, I'm excited. I will, I will play any game that they put out. That, that, tra- like, that trailer just looked incredible so i mean we'll see what that look we'll see what that yeah, that turns cool. out to be I, but i i think I, I think news is is imminent yeah i think so on that game um that's pretty hype yeah so yeah we got a lot to look forward to we'll, we'll definitely next that week we'll definitely much. be yeah we'll, we'll help we'll, i'll be talking about more dredge um we'll definitely be talking about xenoblade yes. uh talking about probably more zelda hype I, I don't know man whatever they they just keep posting like little snippets and stuff like that um so yeah, just a lot, lots to look forward to. It's it's. I feel like it's gonna be a good time. I feel like every day there's a new Zelda video analysis, yeah, whatever for me to watch. Yeah, whether it's Player Essence or someone else doing some sort of Zelda analysis. I, have you watched Zeltic? I did. I just, I, I watched like a 55 minute analysis, an analysis like trailer, yesterday. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Which I didn't even mean to. I was watching something else and I was like on my phone and then it just it, it turned into Zeltic and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I didn't even think of any of this stuff. Later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, good, good stuff. Yep. All right, well, that is going to um, that is going to wrap up the show this week. We appreciate everyone that's been uh, listening and stuff like that. If you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, that would be fantastic um that that would that would much much help much help that would uh that would be greatly appreciated uh and leave us whatever you want like a one-star review you know absolutely you know if you don't if you don't like us because we talk about news 45 minutes into the episode that's totally fine we get it someone recently commented about that there's a feature on apple podcasts where you can select exactly where you want to go in the podcast yeah we we have chapter markers yeah. Um, so if you want to, if you want to skip our uh, our banter at the beginning, 
or mm -hmm. if you hate Zelda because it's a seventy dollar DLC, you can skip that um, talk. Um, yeah, you could skip. If, yeah, whatever, man. You, you can want you can listen to whatever part you want to. It's a, it's a yeah. good time. So yeah, Nick, where can they follow okay. us on our on our, our social stuff? Social stuff. Uh, Twitter, you can follow us at gaming wt bros. Um, we're the ones with the blue check mark. So uh, <laughs> yeah, kidding. we, we paid for it. We pay for it. Just kidding. No, Elon just he, he wanted us to have it. I get why people are mad about Twitter and like the blue thing trademark because like it's it's a verification status, right? Like you don't want someone to impersonate you, but I think people are losing their minds a little bit too much about it. Well, it's just funny because it keeps going back and forth. People like, lose it and then some people get it back, but they didn't pay yeah. for it. It's like it's more just I think it's more just curiosity of of what's going on. Of like, okay, is it only people that are above a million? followers that that get the blue check mark regardless of whether or not they paid for it yeah i don't know is is elon personally paying for lebron james as a blue check mark i mean we just don't know he, he might be you know and then people are like i definitely didn't pay for this blah blah, blah. like whatever man i don't care if he did or i don't yeah i don't i'm not gonna make fun of you like that was the whole thing like i'm definitely not paying for this and then people are like oh i still got my blue check mark and then some people are changing their name. Like my name is so and so. I did not pay for like y'all are doing too much. This is just too. It's too much. Yeah. I hate Twitter. <laughs> uh, but if you want to follow us on there, <laughs> gaming wt bros. Yeah. Also, we're also not on Twitter. Uh, you can follow us on TikTok, Instagram at game with the bro, gaming with the bros cast. Yeah, and we'll, we'll be doing us. tons of Zelda stuff when that launches. So be yes. prepared. Yes. Be get your phones ready yeah <laughs> and then, uh i i'm curious to know what what's your favorite zelda breath of the wild memory shoot us an email yeah at gaming with the bros at yahoo.com and let us know what your favorite memory is whether it's something that happened while you were playing the game something that happened within the game or just the the, the time in your life that you were at when you were playing breath of the wild let yeah. us know it's good times. Good times. Good times. Launch of the Switch. <laughs> that was an epic, epic time. It really was. Like, I immediately got home and, like, didn't even put it on the TV. I was just playing in a handheld next to my wife and just had all the Amiibos. I bought all the Amiibos and I was just clicking them together and I was like, ah. So. <laughs> I uh, guess my wife that week. The first time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Some okay. would say from from the inspiration of Zelda. Yeah. So, brought you guys together. Power, Power of the Switch. Switch. Power of the Switch. One, two, Switch. There, there's two. There's two Joy Cons for a reason. <laughs> there is. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we will see you guys <laughs> next week with uh, just more nonsense. More nonsense. Bye bye. Scheduled nonsense. Scheduled nonsense. <laughs> <laughs>